Hello and welcome to Inside Irons. I'm Chris Skoll. Joining me again this week, the John Hartson to my Paul Kitson. It's the big man, Carlton Cole. Carlton, let's not beat around the bush. This is a tough time at the moment, but if you decide you're going to spend your life supporting West Ham, you know you're going to have some tough times. But suddenly, this Chelsea game is now huge. It's massive. Um, I think the lads know that already. I think all the, the fans know that. The staff know that. Um, we know that. So this is time for the lads to try and churn something out. And I know we've got an, we're going to have to all dig deep together to get a result out of this game. Yes, well, we're going to be looking ahead to the Chelsea game. And we've got a goalkeeper special today. Three goalkeepers, David Martin, Rob Green and Jimmy Walker will be joining us on the show. And we will be revealing next season's home kit. It is going to be a special day for exclusives. And actually, Carlton, you used to play, speaking of kits, in a blue and white kit for Chelsea. And I thought, in terms of exclusives, I don't think you've ever told the story publicly of how you came to transfer from Chelsea to West Ham, because it is quite interesting. Yeah, OK. Um, how long we got? <laughs> <laughs> I'll try and get it all in one. So basically, um, when I first was going to leave Chelsea, I was supposed to go to Tottenham Spurs, by the way. I know, I know. Um, done my medical and everything. Got a phone call from um, Roman Abramovich's right-hand man saying, I've got to go and meet Roman. I had to just leave my medical and go straight down to the bridge had to meet him in the gym by there so like it was kind of intense because <laughs> i didn't know whether i was coming or going from the club but anyway um i was we got there anyway and then he started talking saying he doesn't want me to leave he wants me to go to um csk moscow his other his other club so i was like csk moscow mate <laughs> where do you want me to go to russia <laughs> so i was like there's no way i'm going russia no way <laughs> And these times, I was trying to get into the England setup and all that sort of stuff. And when, one, in those days, if you'd left the country, um, you'd never get looked at seriously for being an international. So I said, there's no way. Then um, I just went off on my holiday. And then I got a phone call from uh, my agent and he put me on the phone to Pards. So Pards obviously was at West Ham at the time. And he said, and he sold this club to me. And I was like, OK, I want to come here. So he, um, agent, done everything while I was away. And then as soon as I landed from the airport, straight into the hotel, hotel airport where Pards was waiting for me there with the chief exec. Um, and then I signed on the dotted line straight away. And then, then the rest is history. The rest is history. I can't believe you're nearly a Spurs player. I made the right decision, didn't I, in the end, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> you could have been sat in the CSKA Moscow t TV oh, studio now doing an interview about your legendary career. with Talking Russian. <laughs> <laughs> it works out for the best. It did. We're all very glad of that. <laughs> Lovely stuff. Well, we beat them earlier this season, but up next, it's East versus West. It's Chelsea. As soon as you're out on the pitch, you want to you want to make things happen, and you know you need to give 100, percent and that's what the fans deserve, and that's what the manager deserves. What an incredible goal by Paolo Di Canio! Oh, what a goal! What a goal from Carlos Tevez! And oh, West Ham lead again. Our next guest has made five appearances for the Mighty Hammers this season, including the star turn in a 1-0 win over Chelsea at Stamford Bridge earlier this season. Welcome to the show, David Martin. How are you doing, David? Very good. Thank you. Pushed away by Martin. Can have a go. Martin makes the save. And on the rebound too. That win against Chelsea, it was so emotional at the end. You hugging your dad. I told my wife the story and I showed her the highlights. She started crying as well. There were tears in the Skull household. Where does that moment sit in the, like your career highlights? You can make me cry again. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's you know, in my career, you know, and, and my life really, um, it's you know one of the moments that even when I was you know this big, when I was running around the training ground, you know, with all the players like Ian Bishop, Julian Dix, and and my dad, and thinking actually getting to that point of actually playing for a team and then getting the result that you know you could only dream of. Um, I still now, I was, you know, obviously in lockdown, I was doing bike rides and stuff, and I'd be riding along, and I'd be like, oh my God, I actually kept a clean sheet against Chelsea. I played for West Ham. Like, it's just, just surreal now, even looking back now, and that's, you know, six months ago now. So, Did you grow up a West Ham fan? Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I had no, oh, no choice. No choice. <laughs> yeah, no choice. I, it's all I knew. It was like, you know, the, the club was just such a massive club, like coming to the, to the games and 
obviously in, in dad play, um, the smells, everything, you know, even like last season, you know, obviously walking to, to, the, to the games and coming to the games and sitting in the stands. Um, and obviously in Watford away last year I went and um, it was just a real surreal moment that, you know, I'll, I'll never, ever forget. There was pressure coming from everywhere and I think I put a lot of pressure on myself anyway. But going into that game, it was uh, more than I'd ever experienced in, in, in my whole life. It's so overwhelming, it, isn't it? It's uh, overwhelming yeah. feeling. But the weird thing, you've, you've played hundreds of league games. Yeah. It's not like you've just snatched from nowhere. It's like yeah. a pub team. You've like, you're accustomed to professional elite level football. You've, like, you've yeah. walked a tunnel like hundreds of times. Yeah. Yeah. But how did that, was it just that it was West Ham, just about how much it meant? It just, yeah, it was just meant everything to me and, and my family. Um, and then, you know, the supporters that, that you could see and they shouted my name the whole game, honestly. And you know, you could feel it. I get goosebumps just thinking about it now. Um, and it, it just push, it pushes you on that, that much more. Um, and it was just it was something that I'll never ever forget for the rest of my life. Did, what, what did your dad say just before the game? Did you just have a quick little brief in beforehand? Um, yeah, yeah we just, he just said, Dave, look, whatever happens, like, you know, we, we've got people up there looking, looking down on us. Um, and yeah, it's, <laughs> that's it's, powerful, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. That's he powerful. Said, he said, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. And that's what I needed to, to know, really. So it didn't really help the nerves at that point. But, <laughs> but, um, yeah, and I think all that emotion at the end. Um, of that, just, how really, did it feel that fine, when that final whistle yeah. went? Uh, it, was, it was relief that, that I hadn't let anyone down, like first and foremost. And obviously, you know, my teammates. And, and it was almost like a moment. I didn't, you, you know, you just, you just can't plan anything like that yeah. in your head of what you think, how the game's going to go. Because you, you just concentrate on every ball and every kick. Um, so just, and I just went, to the ground and all of a sudden it just felt within a second all of them were around me and yeah, I was just like everybody was how did that happen so how, how did that happen so and I think they obviously they could see how much it, it meant to me going into that game like obviously they were taking a mickey out of me before like not being able to eat my food and stuff like that and um because it I was, mean, was nobs yeah no it was Chris, <laughs> Noddy, Chris, uh, like, Chris yeah, is always yeah, like yeah, yeah, Noddy. Yeah. so yeah they, 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 so obviously they don't let you live it down but, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, harsh school but yeah no it's it's, it's, it's great because you used to be a defender right for right. spurs until what 14, 14. Yeah. amazing that so was it like ludo inspired you to um no i don't I, I mean i always used to look at ludo i never thought oh i actually want to play in goal because of ludo but um it was almost like I just enjoyed it. Like you know, when we'd always had one goalie, um, we used to train at uh, I was at Tottenham and obviously a bit at White Hart Lane, and uh, it was um, everyone said, "Oh, who wants to go and goal like that?" I'll, I'll go and goal like that. And how old said, were you then? So full fourteen. Fourteen. Yeah, so late. So, so, so 12, late. 13, fourteen. Um, and then wow. um, we used to love diving at people's feet, and and then one day I just said that I don't I don't enjoy being uh, a centre back anymore. Mm. And He's never been pushy. He's always like tried to let me, even at that age, make my own decision. I mean, he could quite easily have gone, Dave. Come on, you've got yeah. another two years uh, schoolboy at yeah, Tottenham. You got, got, and I literally went to Sunday League, um, playing like you know for Havering, you know my district, and then ended up getting picked up by Wimbledon. And wow. that's it. Just it's just crazy. Within two, eighteen months, I was back at uh, uh, was it Wimbledon with the Premier League. Then so, so you must have been good and got like you must have gone and gone and people going blimey actually, this yeah. is a good choice. I, I don't know. I, I just, I, yeah. I just, just, just don't didn't think about it really. It was just felt just natural to do it. Um, I had a lot of catching up to do. I knew, I knew that, but I still had certain attributes with my feet and stuff like that. And it was yeah. just coming into the game there where you know you could start playing with with, with, with your feet. So it definitely helped me. Lovely. Yeah. Carlton favorite West Ham kit. What are you going with? Not the Avram season. You can pick, <laughs> so you can pick something else. Um, you know what I like. What, the Alpari one, Alpari kit. Oh yeah, yeah, with the lines. With the, the, the Adidas gonna... one. With the oh collar, yeah, yeah, with the yeah, collar. yeah, yeah. I like that one. Yeah. And um, and I actually do like the the kind of greenish one as well. But I didn't get to wear it. Um, the one I think it was last season, but it's greenish. Do you know the one I'm talking about? Bluish. Is it blue or green? I'm colour blind. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Looks green to me. It's green. It's greenish. Oh, right? greyish, 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 greyish. No, it's, it's is blue. It blue, isn't it? Blue, is it blue? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's blue then. <laughs> but, uh, I, 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 obviously a real big favourite of yours, Carl. <laughs> you can't struggling to remember the I'm colour. A, I, it must actually be that I'm colour blind. <laughs> That's what the problem is. All that is. time you thought it was green. Do we wear red or claret? <laughs> 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 Lovely stuff. Well, David Martin has proved that Chelsea can be beaten last November. Let's take a look at that magnificent win at Stamford Bridge. <laughs> James back to Zuma. Kovacic. 
Oh, it's a lovely pass from Kovacic. Pulisic lets it run. Chance for Mount. Straight down the throat of Martin. Okay. He's dropped. Snodgrass into it. Snodgrass is crosses decent. And that's a fine save from Pepe Ariza Balaga to keep out Mikel Antonio. Kovacic going to have a go. Martin makes the save. And on the rebound to... Good work from the new goalkeeper. Pulisic into the path of Kovacic, who scored his first Chelsea goal in midweek. Giroud would have been offside anyway on the rebound, but Martin wasn't to know that. Made the first save from Kovacic, blocked from Giroud, and then dived in before Pedro could get there. Mikel Antonio has brushed off the challenge. Here is Snodgrass, Felipe Anderson in room. Fornals and Cresswell cleverly done, very nicely done. West Ham lead, it's Aaron Cresswell. After a rotten run of form, West Ham lead at Chelsea. Felipe Anderson into Fornals, who sent it into the path of Cresswell, cut inside of James and then bent it inside the post. Excellent stuff from the fullback here. Calm, composed and accurate. Marisa Balaga at full stretch, but he couldn't prevent Cresswell getting his third goal of the season. Chelsea nil, West Ham won. West Ham win at Chelsea for the first time in 17 years. What a much-needed win as well for Manuel Pellegrini. West Ham's first victory for two months, courtesy of Aaron Cresswell's goal. And David Martin on his West Ham debut and his first ever appearance in the Premier League keeps a clean sheet. A great day for West Ham and a very memorable one for him as well. Lovely stuff. Well, that was the highlights. Now, David, there's a special treat. We've got a behind-the-scenes video from that famous day in November at Stamford Bridge. Let's take a look. Yeah, we just... I had a banana in my hand yeah. because I hadn't eaten anything before. Oh. I went to the dressing room and I, I literally I had one bite of that. I can't eat anymore. Like, really? Yeah, it's that bad. <laughs> When did you get told you started? Uh, so, Pe Pellegrini actually said to me, look, I'm not saying that you're going to start like on, on the Thursday. Really? But if you do, are you ready? And I was just like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Imagine if you said no. <laughs> no, no, no. Not ready, Gaffer. Not ready, mate. Cross my mind, I'm telling you. <laughs> um, but yeah, not until like the, the meeting before we went to the to the game. Like literally, I was walking in, and he actually pulled me to the side, and he went, "David, last chance." <laughs> oh really? So, so last now, chance. So now, if you don't want to play, and I was just like, "I play." So yeah. Number eleven, Petro. What did he say here? He's saying it was worst case scenario. He's played in the Premier League now. Is that what he said? At the start of the game, he goes, "Whatever happens, David, you played in the Premier League." He goes, That's I can't true. even take that away from you. Yeah. And it yeah. did set me down, to be fair. Like, it's, you know what I mean? You know, you know from the out. Obviously, I've looked at the club from the outside, and yeah, yeah, to see what knows does in the dressing room and, mm. and how he is as a captain, like, and he's he's different class. You've learnt from the best keys. <laughs> <laughs> that was relief. Yeah. What? What was going? What's going through your head, really? I think, thank God they didn't score on that one because I think I, would, I could have been, like I said, a slight yeah. mistake. So um, managed to get myself out of trouble. So yeah, um, yeah he was with me up there. Definitely. Yeah, he was definitely with yeah. me. <laughs> Well, 
what was you thinking here when he's put that in? I just, like, obviously I was celebrating, like, obviously I wanted to be with all them down there. Were you tempted yeah. to run the length of the pitch? No, I could not that early in the game. <laughs> could have done it added by all. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, then all of a sudden you've got to like, no, right, OK, we're one nil up, we've got something to hang on to now. Yeah. Um, and then it's just a blur because you don't like even looking at the clock. You can't remember yeah, what time moment, it was yeah, and all that. Because you're concentrating stuff. so hard. And obviously, you know, got Javi, my goalkeeping coach. Yeah, uh, he's big. Obviously, the reason why I'm here as well. Yeah, yeah. like he's top man. I've met him uh, a few times. What yeah. a nice guy he is. Great guy and, and good and mentor. One of the best goalkeeping coaches I've ever. Oh, I've is it? Yeah, him. yeah, That's yeah. The top. Technically, and you know the, the things we do before the game, after the game. Yeah. Um, it's all about making you a better goalkeeper. It's brilliant. But yeah, even that this feeling after, like it still didn't feel real. Yeah, it's surreal, isn't it? Like, yeah. I almost didn't want to celebrate too much because it felt like they're going to take it away from you yeah, somehow. Yeah, or, yeah. or you're going to wake no, up from count. the dream. Exactly. Yeah, you know what I mean? yeah, I remember waking up the next morning and, and it's still like, there. Open my eyes. <laughs> I was like. That really happened yesterday. That's like, amazing. Like, Have you kept the, the shirt, the kit, the gloves? Yeah, cool. You kept it all. What, are you going to mount, are you going to frame it? I, I think I will, yeah. It's like, You've got to. Yeah, but yeah. It's, it's, something it's monumental. Yeah. OK, we need some points and up next is Chelsea. Let's have a look at the head-to-head -head stats. And here are the stats. Pretty even, two wins, two draws, two losses for both teams. David Martin responsible for one of those wins. The other win coming in December 2017, the goal scorer Marco Arnautovic in a 1-0 win. So we've got a good record against Chelsea. I was with a Chelsea fan the other day. He said, you're our bogey team. On paper, we've got a chance. Would you agree, Dave? Yeah, well, why not? Um, hopefully we can take positives from the Tottenham game and, 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 and take it into the Chelsea game. It's London derby. Why not? Yeah. Yeah, um, let's talk, quickly talk about that Spurs game. We, that VAR, what's going on? Mate, um, what is going on, really? Because the, the VAR is supposed to help us. <laughs> well, in that situation, it's got to be accurate. And um, I just don't think it worked out for us in that scenario. Um, I think they will tell you that I, we, the lads felt a bit robbed, didn't they? Yeah, obviously in the dressing room after, obviously we knew that it was getting checked, but obviously you can't see from the, the, the TV screens. But when you see it after, it's clearly, you know, whenever it moves that much, yeah. it, it's touch his hand. It's, it's, okay, it's not a good rule, but it is, it's it the, rule. the rule. And it's cost us earlier on in the season. Um, so it's really frustrating. Um, and yeah. that changed the whole, the whole, you know, the whole game. So on our last show, we really bigged up Sebastian Allaire. who had been playing well in the kind of pre-season games. Um, my sources tell me that we're hopeful he might be knocking around come next Wednesday. Oh, hopeful. Oh, oh. Maybe. But, I mean, he would be a huge, huge difference for us. Mate, I was almost about to go and sign a new deal and put on my boots again. <laughs> 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 oh, no, mate, look, no, to be honest, um, obviously, you've got Antonio up there, but he needs help. And those two together, Antonio and Seb together, they are formidable. Like, they're really, really good. And I, I have to, I've been looking forward to after this break, to see them coming back and playing together. But when, uh, when I heard that he was out injured for a little bit, I thought that would knock us. And it's been, and it has, it has kind of, it has been a void up there because you need Seb's present up there, presence up there with, with Antonio running off him. Um, Bowden's done brilliantly. He's done um, brilliant in the last game, Jared. And I think with those three guys, the ingredients are, could, it could bode well for us and going forward. Right, OK, prediction time, Cole. And I know you've got West Ham and Chelsea allegiances, but... Well, every time, I put, every time I predict, it goes wrong. Yeah, so I'd rather not. But if you want me to, yeah. I'll do it. <laughs> I'm going to have to go... I'll go 2-1 West Ham. 2-1 West Ham. 2-1 West, okay. West Ham. Lovely. Dave, what are you thinking? 1-0. 1-0. Tight sheet. one. Yeah, Same again. You've got to go clean sheet, though, haven't you? Yeah. <laughs> clean sheet, of course. Goalkeeper's union. <laughs> Goalkeeper's union. <laughs> 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 OK, our next guest played 219 league games in a six-year spell for the Hammers before ending his career last season at Chelsea. We caught up with Rob Green. It really is Robert Green's day. How on earth did he keep that one up? Oh, that's a super save from Robert Green. Welcome to the show, Rob Green. Um, so, was there any sort of initiation into the Hells Angels? How did it, how did it all work? <laughs> I'm looking for Carol Baskin. It's all their fault. <laughs> uh, um... <laughs> oh, the new Tiger King. Carl was just telling me about your Instagram, Rob Wonky Finger Green. 
and th this wonky finger of yours is all over it. Well, can we have a look? It's, it, yeah, you what can't, is, you can't oh miss it, really. Word. It's, uh, it, it's, I, I use it to scare my children with. And, uh, <laughs> uh, if, they, if they're not doing the homework or don't eat the dinner, I just chase them around the house with my finger. <laughs> my daughter's petrified. <laughs> and how did you get this wonky finger? Was that a, a playing injury, I imagine? Yeah, I think it, it pretty much gave up about 12 years ago as a finger itself. It gave up with life. <laughs> and, uh, it took a whole new life. I don't know whether, I don't know whether you remember, Carlton, but we were, you used to play it. If I catch a finger, it'd pop out and break. But then it yeah, got to the point where... Dave, Dave, when you've got to hurt your finger, you, you dive. And I dive into my right, and it was catching in the ground. You, oh, you see, yeah. if I'm pointing it that way, and it's diving. He was drowning in the ground, so eventually it just sort of this side got tighter and tighter, and that side got more and more stretched, and it, it eventually gave up. So uh, yeah, it's it's one that I should get it fixed. I think if I went on the the waiting list now, I, I'll, I'll probably wait until I'm about seventy. So uh, I'm not going to bother now. <laughs> Carlton was telling me on away day bus at the coach the away games, you would just sit there and read your Financial Times. Is that is that yeah, true? something like that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've, I've mentioned, I've, Rob, Rob, I've mentioned you a few times, man. Right? You, look, goalkeepers are strange, yeah? <laughs> but you looked at, I, when I used to come on the bus and I just used to see this pink paper, yeah? I was like, what the hell is this? And then it was just numbers and, and graphs and all this sort of stuff in it. I'm thinking, do you know what? I'll leave you to it. Like, I'll go to the back of the buff, bus and have some banter. I'll leave you at the front. Yeah, you, know, you, you you get on there. What was, what was it? You played Mario Kart. Mario you Kart. Mario we played Kart. Mario Kart all the time. <laughs> but do you know what, Rob? I tell you what, yeah. I wish I read the, read the Financial Times because I probably understand a little bit more about money um, later on in my career. So you was doing the right thing. I think for goalkeepers in general, David. So first of all, you're facing the wrong way. Everyone else is facing the opposite direction. You, you know, the ball's coming towards you. Everyone's facing you. You you take pleasure from causing other people disappointment. <laughs> and uh, you know, it is, there's nothing greater as a goalkeeper when the crowd go up and cheer and then you pluck one out the top corner or get a fingertip on something and they and, it, yeah. and the, the disbelief that goes around the ground is is brilliant and and I just it, and it's and it's a completely different discipline it's a you know and and you've got to think independently and and the the manner I don't know David it, it's it's quite difficult to describe but it, it's it's how you convey your personality and your persona within the team when you're on your own, when in effect you're not part of a team. So it's, it's very difficult to describe, but it does, in a sense, uh, create its own eccentrics. But at the same time, you, you, you appreciate that within the goalkeepers union, everyone gets on and everyone appreciates each other. So you're actually better off taking the whole as a goalkeeper's union as a team itself and looking at that as, as a group of people and saying, well, actually, they're all quite similar in their own regard in that. Yeah. I didn't realise the goalkeeper's union was a proper thing. Is it actually you all, all your goalkeepers hang out? I didn't know that either. I've been playing for over 20 years. <laughs> what is this, a secret, secret, secret society? You were on a WhatsApp chat. <laughs> What's going on here? Special handshakes we got. <laughs> <laughs> Rob, you were part of the famous Great, great Escape of 2007. The, it's arguable we might be in a bit of a kind of great escape scenario here. How did you do it back in 2007? How did things turn around like that quickly? I think I think there was, uh, you know, speaking to Alan Kerbishley afterwards, I think the, the turning point, and there was a, there's a game that whilst you're in lockdown, I think it's been on every day, was us losing to Spurs 4-3. And uh, it, it, it was one that I think that that moment, he saw a spark and he saw something and he saw a team where he could say, yeah, I've got something that I can build it around. And I don't think we did anything spectacular in terms of uh, training, in terms of sort of finding a magic formula in, in terms of formation or anything like that. I think it was purely down to having a, a team that you could con he could consistently pick and know what he was going to roughly get every game. And, that form, and let's not forget, we had we had some special players in there. Had, like obviously Carlos and 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 Yossi and and Bobby was flying by the end of the season, and people and we had a back four that played every game, and and I think I played, you know, we were chopping and changing the back four. Me, I played. Roy Carroll came in for a bit, and then I came back in. So it was that it was every position, the, whether it was Pards or whether it was Curbs, they were trying to find a, 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 just a consistency there. 
and eventually he kind of struck upon it. And you know, I think at the end of it, they, they, the management team is saying they, they all went for a, a drink after the staying up at old. They turn around and say, we, we let the lunatics run the asylum, basically. We, we, you know, the players would come in, train. We wouldn't do too much in training, wouldn't put too much emphasis on the games or individual tactics, just relied that we had an understanding as a team. And, and, and it gelled. And, and I think you look, at the, you look at the teams down the bottom at the moment and they're scratching around, especially for goals. And, you know, West Ham, your, your Bournemouth and, and your Villa, they, they, they come back now. Villa have scored one. West Ham you, you haven't scored any. And Bournemouth haven't scored any goals. And so they're scratching around for that combination, for that formula. And, and I think it's going to be that team that goes bang. One game there, we've got it. Okay, consistently, we can go forward with this for the next six games, seven games, however many, many it is. So... It's can you find that formula or just that consistent performance and, and, and stick with it? And, and what was your favourite ever match that you played for West Ham? It is, there's a lot. I mean, it's, it's tough because there's obviously the, the playoff final, which was a great one. Staying up at Old Trafford was another one. And in that run, playing at the Emirates and winning at the Emirates, being the first team to win at the Emirates in, in there as well. And, and then there was some crazy games. You know, I remember playing at Portsmouth, I think it was on Boxing Day, and winning 4-1 or something like that. Yeah, I remember and, that game. I remember that game. I got a goal there. Yeah, I mean, well, it, was, that, was, that, that, was that the game? That, that was the game where you got the goal. A goal. Yeah, yeah, it was... Uh, yeah. Just, <laughs> just, hey, just that, that one game. Don't you remember it? <laughs> I, well, I, there was too many calls, too many, too many. Goals. <laughs> that's, that's up with you. <laughs> uh, no, I, I, I think there's, you know, a lot in there. And then you go like even, even ridiculous games where we, like, are getting sent off at, at Blackpool and winning four-one. You know, that that yeah. sort of thing. He's... <laughs> I remember that, and then Lansbury had to go and go. <laughs> yeah, Henry, Henry Lansbury being subbed on as the sub goalie when he's a centre midfielder. Did, I mean... did you give him any tips as he was walking off? <laughs> Yeah, let him a jumper, and he's like down by his knees, and that, that's brilliant. <laughs> but yeah, there's there some there's some mad games. But I think yeah, I think the the for me personally, having been at Norwich and getting relegated with Norwich, and being so desperate to move on, and then moving on, and then looking like we were relegated. I think what sticks with me the most about being with West Ham is is coming out the second half, and. It's the only time I've ever known Old Trafford in unison to be able to sing one song and it would send them down. And, <laughs> it, it, and, and, I, and I stood there in Old Trafford in the hammering down rain going, nah, not today, not today. We can't, I can't do this again. I can't get relegated today. And, and yeah. just that emotion and that elation uh, for me at the end of that game, the previous, I don't know, whatever it was, six months, that run of three, four months in that from being absolutely in despair to the elation at the end of the end of the game was 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 unparalleled so rob chelsea's up next i know you have some chelsea allegiances of course you famously lifted the europa league trophy for them who will you be supporting come next wednesday <laughs> well i think you look at it and you say who needs the points more and, and at the minute chelsea <laughs> definitely got their they, they, they've got their own thing i, I think with with the guys at West Ham, it, it, it's going to be a huge order, and I and I, I I I look at it, and you you say you you look at the same for that form formula, that combination, and how how we're going to get performance out of the guys that we can pick, and that sort of thing. So I think for the sakes of of, of West Ham, I, I I desperately hope Chelsea stay in the prem, uh, Champions League positions, and but I would love West Ham to win that game just to give them the lift, just because I. It feels like they need something to give them a lift. The, the, the guys there, it, it, you know, the work, the, the, the effort was in a game from uh, the Wolves game to the Spurs game. And, and, but it looks like somewhat you've got guys there playing, giving their all, but just need some, a spark from somewhere. And if they can get that against Chelsea, then, then it will be an amazing boost for the running for the end of the season. Lovely. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for all your memories that you provided in Claret and Blue. And thank you for this the image of you now of this magnificent haircut. <laughs> pleasure. Always a pleasure. Keep smiling, guys.
Lovely stuff. That was Rob Green. Now, last week we did our top five goals against Wolves. We were going to do our top five goals against Chelsea, but basically we've scored too many good goals against Chelsea. So here instead is our top ten goals against the Blues. So there we go, our best goals against Chelsea. Any favourites there, Dave? Uh, a few. Uh, for me, though, I think the Canio. Um, obviously, yeah, just the volley, just bosh. Oh, like top corner. I know it was near post, but yeah, it's unstoppable. Yeah, wonderful scenes. All right, and if you're wondering where Colton has gone, he has gone to get changed into next season's brand new West Ham home kit. And I think Colton is here now to demonstrate it. Yes. A wonderful model. Look at this new kit. Hello, guys. Wow. Turn around. Hey, hold on. You've got to look at the detail at the back. Look at the detail. 125 years to celebrate the 125th year of West Ham's existence. And then, voila. 
Et voila. So here I've got some facts about this kit. It's inspired by our golden era 60s home kit as worn by Bobby Moore, Martin Peters and Jeff Hurst. It's the 125th anniversary home kit. It's a brand new crest design. If we can have a look at that crest design. Oh, look at that. B bigger badge, extra bit of detail. Lovely with the kind of umbro embroidery there. This is a nice kit. I love this. And this brand new 60s inspired home kit is available to pre-order from the 29th of June and available in stores from Wednesday 15th of July. And Colton, you look good in that. Thank you very much. And it feels good on my skin as well, because I do use cocoa butter <laughs> and it's very smooth. So I need the smooth material to match it. So, but actually it's got like a t-shirt sort of feel to it. So I think the fans are going to love it. Yeah, it's, you know, it's classic. You don't need to good, make it too complicated. Yeah. Classic West Ham kit. And I love this bit at the back. Yeah? About, yeah. Nice. nice. Fan Dave, thumbs up? Yes. No, I'm really, really happy with that. Yeah, lovely. Nice. That's my modelling days over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, big fan of that. Okay, now rounding off our hat trick of West Ham goalkeepers, we've got a man who played in another memorable game against Chelsea at Stamford Bridge. It's Jimmy Walker. Hello, Jimmy. How are you doing? Backwards cap, down with the kids, eh? Oh, I had to be done, but listen, if I take it off and you see the lockdown bar on it, you'll understand why. Oh, my word. Look at that. Out of control. <laughs> hey, at my, age, I'm, at my age, I'm delighted it's growing still, so I'll take the rough with the smooth. <laughs> well, Jimmy, we're looking ahead to the Chelsea game. You made your debut against Chelsea in the League Cup 2004, saved a penalty from Frank Lampard. What a day. It was incredible. Listen, I've said this many times. I don't really like to talk about it and live in the past, but there I was, shed ends, 8,000 West Ham behind me, fog descending off the Thames. <laughs> it was a brilliant time. <laughs> <It was> a... <laughs> no, it was, uh, to make me, so it was my away debut, actually. I played in the, in the round before it at home uh, in the same cup. And then, yeah, to go to Stamford Bridge and, Play there. That was my first taste of, of the West Ham fans, as it were, and it, it, it was it was amazing. And you know, to to crown it with saving Frank's penalty was was something that lived me forever. But you were a little bit off your line, though, weren't you? I think maybe should the referee have asked to retake it. <laughs> well, well, funny enough, I spoke to Andy Durso about this. Like it's only not so long ago, I just saw him. He was a, he was assessing the refs at a game. I mean, I don't know how he was a, assessing the refs. He was a terrible ref anyway. But, <laughs> <laughs> but he, he, was, he was assessing the refs. And I said, I, I just asked him if he remembered it. Because at the time, Martin Tyre ended up sending me a, 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 a video through. It was that long ago. It was a video, not even a DVD. And just said, I hope you might like to watch your says back, Jim. Great performance. Um, just watch Andy Durso after the goal. And my, my crowning moment in the West Ham career was nearly taken away from me by the linesman who was flagging furiously for, to say I was offside, I moved off my line, which I had, I was near the six-yard box, to be fair. But <laughs> Andy, Durso, we, Andy Durso, because of all that, he was going off in the stands around it, and he was going mental, and as I saved it, the West Ham fans were going mental, and you could just see Andy Durso looking at the lines when it was the days before the, they, had the, they could talk to each other in the mic, and he's just running off going, I can't repeat what he said, but along the lines of, Sack that, I'm playing on, play on, and just, and just ran off. So it, it was, my crowning moment was nearly taken away from me, but fortunately, Andy, uh, well, shall we say, uh, let the fans dictate a little bit to him and played on, which was fair enough. Uh, Jimmy, I want to ask you some key questions from your time at West Ham. Firstly, who was your favourite teammate? Be careful, Jimmy. Your, your oh, there's team. a lot there. Look, I've got CC in the background. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we had, I was lucky in my time there. We had some fantastic characters there. You know, we had Big Ginge, Bobby Zamora early on. Teddy, Teddy Sheridan was great. Even Anton, I mean, Anton comes across very dry and he's not got a lot of battle. <laughs> <bit. Live. laughs> in the changing rooms, he comes alive, though. He, he was brilliant. And, you know, we had so many good characters. It'd be hard to pick just one, to be honest. It was, it was incredible. The incredible five, four or five years I had there was, was outstanding. Loved every minute of it. Who was the best striker you kind of trained with who would just put it past you every time? Are you edging for CC? No, there's nothing to do with me. <laughs> you can't, I can't get into that school. Teddy Sheridan, Dean Nashton, you know what I mean? I know. I'm listening. We had, I mean, CC was different gear as well, by the way. Just because you didn't know, he didn't know what he was going to do. So it was a goal. Yeah, <laughs> they always say that about me. <laughs> Unpredictability. <laughs> nah, CC, you was good, man. I'll give you that, to be fair. But listen, we had, I mean, in that time, we obviously had Sheridan, who was one of, one of the best players I've ever played with uh, through all my career. He was, he was outstanding, just poised and balanced, was, was great. And 
Tevez, when Tevez came in, he was sort of, didn't really come to the party for a few months. And then I remember late on in the season when we was, we was really yeah. down here, really struggling. And, you know, you're looking for a catalyst to, to uh, just one moment that shifts everything. And, and Tevez scored a free kick against Spurs. We lost the game, but he just, I think he got carried away on the emotion and, and swept everyone with it at the time. And, and we all went with him in the change rooms. And for the last nine or ten games, maybe a dozen games, he was unplayable, Tevez, for those yeah. games. So, Definitely. you know, yeah, that, that's, uh, sorry, CC. And, and probably Bobby Z as well. Bobby Z was a great striker as well. But I'd have to go with sharing him with Tevez as a, as a partnership would be really hard to beat. And what was your favourite match that you ever played in for West Ham? Well, to be honest, I mean, you t- the Chelsea game with Texas beating, I mean, a lot of people forget, and I don't even like to remind it, but we lost the game. If we'd have, got, if we'd have won that game, then that would have been hands down the best game of all time. But it, it was, I mean, Anton got a header in the last, last few seconds and it hit the bar and that would have been, capped it lovely. And so but the Chelsea game's up there for me. That, that was amazing. I mean, and I watched Dave when he played against Chelsea there and, it's just, it was just emotional for me and emotional to watch Dave doing that. He stole me thunder a little bit, to be fair. I'm not forgiving <laughs> that, to be honest. I mean, the, the playoff final was, was, was really special for me as well as playing it. But obviously, it was a little bit, it was bittersweet, shall we say, towards when I you know, injured my knee with a minute to go. But that, that still lives yeah. in the memory. It's a fantastic day, to be fair. So I was lucky. Had some, we had some great days. The first three years was amazing for, for myself. Um, you know, I had, we had, I had the Chelsea game, we had the playoff final, we had the FA Cup final. And then we sort of had the great escape where we beat Man United at Old Trafford with that Tevez goal as well, which was, which was an incredible end to that season, which was such a roller coaster. So the first three years was amazing. I sort of knew my role after that. I couldn't quite get back to the fitness levels I wanted with my knee. So I, I knew I was always going to be around second, third choice at that time. And it was great to be around such, you know, the club I'd fell in love with as well. And the supporters were always brilliant to me. The lads were great. So it was great to stay around. It didn't quite affect it the last couple of years like I I would have wanted to on the pitch, even though I was always in the squads and that, so which was great on that. Chelsea next. We look like we might be in a bit of a, another great escape scenario. Do you see us getting some points in this game? I mean, if it finished now, what are we two two goals ahead? Bournemouth, I think. So if, if it finished now, I'd be delighted at the minute. I think so would most, and we can have a rebuild over the summer. Um, it's going to be tough. I mean, we've had some real. You know, it's been a hard season for us. It's been a real tough season. You know, we. We looked like we was picking up form again before the break. You know, we'd, we, we'd had a right go against Liverpool and should have got something out of that game. And then, obviously, come back into it. And it, it's not done, don't look like he's done us any favours at the minute. But, you know, tough games to come into. We've got some very winnable games on paper. You've got to go out and perform. It'd help if we had the fans in, in the crowd, behind, in the stadium behind us. Um, but, you know, I, I think we'll have enough. I do. It's going to be, what did Fergie refer to it? Squeaky bomb time. I think it'll definitely be that. And I think it'll go down to the wire. Um, hopefully, we can just get enough. Like I say, we've got, I think we've got three or four games of teams around us. So, it's going, to be, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough, but I do think we'll do it. Lovely. Thank you very much for joining us, Jimmy. Get back to your picnic. All the best. Right, that was Jimmy Walker there. Jimmy Walker, what a man. I've got fond memories of him. He's the top, top, top notch for me. Um, in and around the dressing room, he's got the vibes, got everything. And he just creates a good atmosphere for the lads and um, when, the, when the goings gets tough, he's the one that drags the lads um, through it. So for me, Jimmy's up there with some of the, one of the best players I've ever played with. <laughs> wow. Uh, Dave, did he, did he coach you at Peterborough, did we say? No, no, just obviously playing against him. Oh, and, right, and, yeah. yeah, and obviously I've known Jimmy for quite a few years. I did, actually did my coaching badges with Jimmy at my UEFA B. So I um, spent like two weeks, an eventful two weeks it was. <laughs> so trying to get a word in sometimes. It's, it doesn't come up red, does he? Yeah, he's, no, he's, he's a great he's, guy. Uh, he's yeah, a great, great guy, guy Jimmy. Yeah. OK, now it wouldn't be a football show without a football competition. And thanks to our friends at Scope Markets, we're offering you the opportunity to have a Zoom call with a West Ham first team player of your choice. To be in with a shout, all you need to do is send us a picture of yourself decked out in all your West Ham kit and send it to Inside Irons at westhamunited.co.uk. We'll pick a winner and you will have a chance to chat to that West Ham first team player of your choice. OK, then, so Chelsea at home on Wednesday night, Carlton. You went up to the roof to watch it last time. Where are you going to hide this time? Well, I fell off the last time, so I ain't going back <laughs> up there. I've got a headache now and I got dragged out because I wasn't supposed to be there. Um, well, we are proud to say we have been recommissioned here on Inside Irons to appear before every home game this season. So we will be back for the Burnley game. Uh, thank you to our guests today, David Martin, to Jimmy Walker and to Rob Green. Chelsea on Wednesday night. Let's get three points. Come on, you Irons. Mm-hmm.